This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Rexel Gilbert. I'm so pleased that you have joined us. We have a great program coming up. Pensacola State College will come alive with a pitter-pat of dancers' feet this summer as a popular and growing program enters its 33rd year. Continuing programs aren't the only ones making news on the PSC campus, though. Dr. Ed Meadows is in the studio to talk about programs being offered at Pensacola State and also the 2 Plus 2 program. And not all of the learning at PSC takes place in your typical classroom with your typical students. We'll show you why there's something for practically everyone here. And recognizing PSC teachers for their excellence in the classroom. For 33 years, students in the art of dance have been finding their way to the Pensacola State College campus each summer. They spend a week on campus studying various disciplines of dance from instructors who are known around the world for their talent, their choreography, and their teaching abilities. So let's go peek inside the dance studios for a few moments for a preview of what this year's dancers will experience at the Summer Dance Workshop. One, two, one. This workshop is a very special workshop. I feel very passionately about it. Um, I think the overall quality is what attracts people to our workshop. Um, with our instructors, we have the, all the instructors are working professionals in their field, they're educators. Um, they teach class. They don't just show combinations and have kids do it. They're actually teaching technique. Also, I think the location, I mean, Pensacola and the Pensacola State College, we have a beautiful campus, the facilities are wonderful. It's centrally located in the city. It's very close to the malls and the restaurants, and especially for our visitors from out of town. We're, what, 20 minutes from the beach? I mean, it's, it's just a wonderful location. Be myself again. So as far as my interactions with my students, I'm pretty lucky. Um, they like my personality, they like the way I teach, which is it's a real nice feather in the cap after doing this for so long that you have students that want to keep coming back. I mean, I have students that ask me advice on everything from what do they do when they're in New York City to how do I do the shuffle right to, um, you know, what college should I go to? <laughs> When you bring a kid up to the front of the classroom and work on a step with them, or work with them one-to-one, -one, they're getting, they're breaking out of their shell. They're becoming a little bit more comfortable being themselves in front of other people. My favorite class is definitely the improv class. Um, I don't think I ever had that much fun in a dance class until I took the, um, the improv class with Larry Lavender. And he was an amazing teacher and I learned so much from him and it's crazy. <laughs> um, he'll have you run around one moment, he'll have you freeze one moment, um, he'll have you working with different people that you don't know. Um, I think what sets the Pensacola State Summer Dance Workshop apart from others is um, this, well, we talk about our low student-teacher ratio. Um, we have class sizes. We don't have real, the real huge classes that sometimes they'll encounter at other workshops. Um, so our teachers really get to know these kids and the kids get to know the teachers. So they get a little bit more hands-on, one-on-one kind of instruction from these people. Classes are small. The instructors, you get corrections from the instructors, one-on-one -on -one corrections. This is a week full of quality instruction from choreographers and professionals around the country 
just nothing else can touch this. And I've done a lot of research as to what's out there, and it's my opinion that nothing even comes close to this as far as the value you receive. This summer will be my third time attending the summer dance workshop, and I keep coming back because it's such an eye-opening experience, and it allows you to take classes that you may have never taken before. Like my first summer here, I tried a hip hop class, and I'm very ballet oriented, so it was very different and good experience to try something new. What'd you think about hip hop? <laughs> I was terrible at it. <laughs> but it was fun to be able to try something completely out of my comfort zone. We try to bring in some of the best teachers around. Um, these are people that are very active in the professional and academic dance world. Um, we have a full professor that we bring in from Carolina, North Carolina Greensboro. We have our tap teacher who study, who's um, toured with tap dogs, uh, Anthony Lacasio. We have Bethany Hooks that we bring in from the West Coast and our fabulous Keith Cross that we bring in from Houston, Texas. So we, we, get, we, we have a nice blend of our local talent, which we love and treasure, and we bring in some nationally and internationally known people. I think it's really important um, for teachers and students to study with people that they don't normally get to do on a daily basis because you know we, we study at our studios and we like to encourage our kids to go and study with other people it just enhances their training and it makes them a, a well-rounded dancer. I think the, the campus here at Pensacola State College we're pretty proud of it it's a beautiful place to come. Um, the nice thing about this workshop is our classes are held in different areas on the campus. It's just not in one building. So we, you, so visitors to our campus can kind of explore and see what we have here at the college. Um, we have some great facilities here and when, like I said, we like to show off our campus. When your students come to this workshop, they're not going to leave. <laughs> I know I didn't. Um, just the stuff that you learn, it, it makes you want to keep dancing and keep dancing and keep dancing and you never get tired. Well, when they say class is over, I'm always really sad that the class is over because I just want to keep going, but I'm also exhausted because the teachers really push you to do your best and everything, but I, mostly I just want to keep going, keep dancing as long as possible. I got to meet Gregory Hines, um, had a conversation with him, it was very cool, and one of the things he said is we just don't teach tap, we teach light. Students can register for the Summer Dance Workshop by going to pensacolastate.edu forward slash dance workshops or by going to the workshop's Facebook page, Summer Dance Workshop Pensacola State College, or by calling 850-484-1809. When we come back, PSC President Dr. Ed Meadows joins us in the studio. Right now, a look ahead to what's coming to the Pensacola State Campus soon. And welcome back to Pensacola State Today. We're so glad that you've tuned us in today. Joining us in the studios is Dr. Ed Meadows. You're a regular guest, and we're always so happy that you dropped by to see us. Well, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to come by and talk about Pensacola State College. Well, good. Well, in the past, we've talked about the baccalaureate degrees, and we've talked about the associate's degrees. What about the university transfer students? What can you tell us about that? Well, I'm glad you asked You're that. You're so glad I asked. Yes, I am. Uh, you know, our Associate of Art and Associate of Science uh, degrees are a very large part of what we do at Pensacola State and always has been historically. Uh, our, um, our university transfer degree programs uh, offer an opportunity for uh, something that was started in, uh, in Florida. It's called the 2 plus 2, and it is a national model, which uh, 
actually uh, is laid out in the legislature that if a student gets an associate degree, associate of art, associate of science degree from uh, a community or state college in Florida, then they're guaranteed admission to one of our state universities. And of course, the majority of our students transfer that are in the AA and AS degree for university transfer, they transfer to uh, University of West Florida. And uh, we, we think we do a really good uh, job with our university transfer curriculum in that 51% of all of our transfer students, once they transfer, maintain a B average at the university. Uh, and 70, almost 77% of our students uh, maintain a uh, C plus average or higher, uh, which is above the state average for the other 27 uh, colleges in the Florida college system. So I, I think that uh, the proof is in the pudding, as they say, and, and our faculty and staff do, uh, I think, an admirable job in preparing students for uh, the university curriculum. And of course, we have students uh, that also go to the other state universities. Uh, but we have a, a special partnership with uh, the University of Florida that is just beginning. And Dr. Judy uh, Benson and I have uh, agreed to a direct admit program that is very similar to the direct admit programs that uh, UWF now has with Gulf Coast State College and Northwest Florida State College, where they guarantee uh, admission, direct admission to UWF once they are accepted mm -hmm. as students here at Pensacola State. And of course, they have to finish their associate degree, but the direct admit program is uh, somewhat of a guarantee that at least they uh, are on track uh, to enter the University of West Florida once they complete their degree. And UWF will have a counselor, career counselor on our campus to advise students uh, on matriculating to UWF uh, as they prepare for uh, finishing at Pensacola State. So we're really excited about that program. Uh, that program was piloted by the University of Central Florida with the surrounding state colleges there and was very successful and Dr. Bentz wanted to extend that concept into Northwest Florida. So uh, we're anxious to get started with that program. Super news and you also have many new programs right here on the Pensacola State College campus. I'd love to talk about those. <laughs> well, if we come back to, you know, one of the major focuses of our mission, which is workforce training, right. uh, we have several new associate and certificate uh, degree programs. Uh, our architectural design and construction technology programs are really taking off now as uh, the economy is boosting back up. Mm -hmm. We also have the cyber forensics program, uh, which is a new associate degree program that uh, is uh, to complement our um, holistic cyber security program. And we have a lot of students uh, in, enrolled uh, this past year and going into their second year there. Uh, we also have pharmacy management. Uh, you know, we offered pharmacy tech uh, several years ago. This is a, um, an AS program to feed the pharmacy tech students to get a certificate, um, feed them into the associate degree that uh, allows them to uh, move into a mental management position in the pharmaceutical industry. And then we have a, um, a new AA degree in social work, as well as our new applied technology welding program uh, we just received our two uh, transport trailers that have virtual welders and real life welders and we, we sent those to um, Century, uh, our Century Center where we have a number of students that completed the uh, residential wiring program and now they're going to be completing the welding program. And uh, I don't know if uh, our audience uh, knows this, but there's a tremendous, tremendous shortage of welders. Uh, in the shipyards, and particularly in Mobile, and mm -hmm. also with the Airbus uh, industry in Mobile, as well as locally here as well. And uh, these jobs pay anywhere from um, 18 to $40 an hour. So that's a good living if you want to be a right. welder. Uh, and a lot of women are going into welding, I might mention that. I actually know someone recently, a woman, who has decided to pursue a career in that field, and she's absolutely loving it. Well, so. you, you know, uh, the, the workplace, uh, if you're willing to work and if, you, if you're willing to uh, get the skills, uh, there's opportunity for old, young, male and female. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a psychiatric technology program that has been requested by our, our mental health partners and that's starting this coming fall. Uh, the machinist operator programmer is a new, it's a CNC, it's, it's, a, it's more of a computer science program 
but it is an industry-based program, and that's a growing industry in Northwest Florida. And then our engineering technology programs, uh, those have always been strong here, and we're starting a new um, a certificate program um, in the uh, engineering technology programs. Okay. Well, and all of these programs, as, as you mentioned, are, are designed to put your students to work so that they can move off the campus and into the workforce, earn a good living, have a good life. That's exactly right. Um, you know, uh, as we talk about uh, what the Chamber is focusing on with uh, virtual industry and um, aviation, um, we look at uh, the electronics fields and the internet fields. Um, we've we've got have a rare opportunity recently where uh, through the Florida Lambda Rail, which is a dark fiber uh, highway mm -hmm. across Florida, where we just completed the ring here in Pensacola, uh, that allows uh, the the uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, governmental agencies, education, and hospitals uh, to tie onto that dark fiber, and we're hosting that through Pensacola State. Uh, Sacred Heart, Baptist Hospital, uh, Corey Station, uh, government entities, but that's going to speed up the, the uh, internet processing for each of us by anywhere from a thousand to ten thousand times what it is without that dark fiber, and that's certainly what is needed in Northwest Florida as we look to expand those industries right. in virtual technology. Okay, well, Dr. Meadows, we are out of time, but thank you so much for coming by, and we'll see you again next month to talk about what's going on at Pensacola State College. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. When we come back, we will talk about leisure and recreation courses at PSC, but for now, a look ahead to some events that are headed your way at Pensacola State College. Not all of the learning at Pensacola State College takes place in a typical classroom or involving typical college students. What do I mean by that? Well, why don't we let the expert in the leisure and recreation programs at PSC answer that question as we welcome Francis Yeo to our studios. And Francis, you are the coordinator of the leisure, uh, recreation and leisure programs at PSC, and we're so glad you're here today. Oh, well, thank you so much. I like to tell people I'm in charge of fun. Well, that's a good thing to be in charge of. <laughs> yes, thank you so is. much. First of all, let's just kind of set the groundwork here and tell us why Pensacola State College has these courses, the recreation and leisure sure, courses. Sure. The, the mission of the continuing education department is to be the strong link between the college and the community for um, courses and programs in recreation and leisure for lifelong learning at reasonable prices and in convenient locations for students of all ages. Great. And where are these programs held? We're, we have five campuses. You know, you've heard a lot about how we've expanded. So we do have these non-academic classes available in Pensacola, Warrington, Milton, Century, as well as South Santa Rosa County. Of course, cost is always a consideration. So what does it cost to enroll in these programs, what's involved with that? Well, there's no um, actually admission fee that you have to do because uh, with usually academic classes, but each class is priced based on the number of hours. So we have like two hour workshops that might be 20 or $25, going all the way up to 12 week courses that might be over $100. So the price is based on whether we're supplying the supplies, some of our art classes come with supplies. Mm -hmm. So we have a wonderful booklet that gives you a menu. Um, to choose from. Okay, now there are many uh, recreation and leisure programs in the community. What sets PSC's programs apart? Well, that's what's so exciting to me because we are based in an education community and that's really important because you could take some exercise classes anywhere. But we add the educational component. What's the safety part of taking this class? And what makes it something that's going to help you with lifelong learning? Um, your mind as well as your body. Okay, so let's say I want to sign up for one or more of these programs. What steps do I take? How do I find out about them? Well, we have a wonderful website. You can find our catalog there. You can ask us to mail you one. We still print a paper copy of it. And so you can go to our um, 
an email and send us a, a request for a booklet. It's just ce at pensacolastate.edu or just call us. We have a wonderful staff that's very customer focused and we would be glad to mail you a copy. You would register on any campus or you can register online or you can um, it just mail it in. We just want to make it as easy as we can for you. If you need any help registering, please call our office. Okay, that all important hyphenated word online. What about <laughs> online continuing education? Sure, we have some wonderful online classes. We work with a vendor that um, gives you a wide array of classes available in a lot of different subjects, like too numerous to mention on this, sh this show. But again, it's in the catalog where you can look through, you choose it. Most of them are $99 and the, it's an easy to follow process. And if you have any trouble following it, like you haven't taken an online class before, mm -hmm. we'd be glad to hold your hand. And if you're not sure if you want to take it, you can actually do the whole first lesson without having to pay for it to find out if this is what you're really interested in. What a deal. Yes. <laughs> All right, talking about deals, a big deal is Kids College. Talk to me about Kids What? What in the world is that? This is so much fun. I love to ask kindergartners, are you ready for college? <laughs> And they look at me like, are you crazy? I haven't gone to first grade yet. But it's very similar to the concept of going to college because the different time slots have different classes available. And so the students, the parents, can pick a class in different time slots. So there's maybe three to five classes in each time slot. They're all age appropriate for mm -hmm. six to 12 year olds. They can choose one class and just come maybe take swimming class or just take pottery class. Or they can stay the whole day, just like a college student can stay the whole day taking classes. Okay. And it's held on the Pensacola campus, which is North 9th Avenue. We do have bus service from the Milton campus to bring students here. So if the Santa Rosa um, students would like to attend, we do make it a little easier yes, to do. get over here. So let's say one of the students, just the children, decides to stay the whole day. Describe for me a typical day at Kids College. Sure. Um, our headquarters is Building 96. is the Continuing Education Building, which is across the street from the library, College Boulevard. And they would come check in. Their parents check them in. Um, we have a drop-off lane, make it real easy. They fill out of a lunch request form if they want to buy lunch at Subway, which is in the Student Center, or they can bring their lunch. At 8 o'clock, we load them all up on school buses and take them around the whole campus. We have classrooms all over campus that we use. We're in the computer center as well as in the pool, in the sports center. It's really, they're all over campus. And then they come back between each class and we reload them up and take them to their next class. And, and so at the end of the day, then you say, are you ready for college? And they go, yes, I don't know how to tie my shoes, but this is good. <laughs> It really does help them feel comfortable being on the college campus and everybody is so supportive That's of great. having the, the students here. I have wonderful teachers that are very passionate about whatever their subject is that they come and inspire the kids. And when the parents come tell me, when my kid got home, he just fell asleep. And I said, then we did our job. There you go. <laughs> they wore them out. <laughs> so you, the age difference, the kindergartners who may not know how to tie their shoes, but then you have the, you said up to 12 years old? Yes. We so do you divide them up? How does that work with the classes and, and who they um, intermingle with throughout the day? Sure, sure. It's really important to give them age-appropriate um, lessons because mm -hmm. a six-year-old is very different than a 12-year-old, you know. And, um, you think? It, you think? <laughs> <laughs> so the six to eight-year-olds together and then the eight to ten-year-olds are together and then the ten to twelve-year-olds are together. So if they're mm -hmm. on the, the bordering ages, they actually have more choices of classes. So those are, they're divided into those age groups for classes. So they, they might could take the same subject as their big brother or sister, mm -hmm. but they take it at a different time. Okay, so now that we've gotten everyone excited about kids' college, the big question is, how do you register? How do we sure. get there? Well, we have a wonderful schedule. Again, it is on the website, okay. or we can mail you a copy. We will be delivering copies throughout many of the Escambia and Santa Rosa schools for them to. You're going to go through, and you're going to actually sit down and choose classes in each time frame. And a lot of parents have told me it sometimes is a little easier for them to pick two classes than the kids to pick two classes. Okay. So because we have a lot of academic classes, but it's not r as the rigorous as the school year, 
Um, so, but we have like math games. So they, they improve their math skills by playing different games and that type of thing. And so they can register at any campus okay. or they can call us. We'll walk them through the process of registering online. We will have a parents open house on May the 19th and we'll have registration available there as well as meeting the teachers so that they can ask questions directly to the teachers. Well, Frances Yo, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about these great programs. I wish they'd had Kids College when I was a kindergartner. Yes, that would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again for stopping by Pensacola State today. Thank you. All right, and when we come back, not just an apple for the teacher, an award for excellence in classroom instruction. You know, this time of year, students who have excelled in the classroom begin receiving notice of certain honors they've earned, but they are not the only ones. Teachers who have demonstrated excellence in the classroom are also being honored. Recently, the Academy of Teaching Excellence Awards were handed out. Over the next three programs, we will profile those teachers. This month, we'd like for you to meet Professors Cynthia App and Amber Carey. I like the use of the negative space. You've really I think one of the most fantastic things about being a teacher is what I learn from my students. The students coming into our programs have grown up with technology that I didn't see until I was in my 30s. And I learn oftentimes as much from my students as they learn from me. I had planned on going out into the business world until I actually got into the production labs, started teaching the students, and started being rewarded with incredible results. And that's one of the advantages of being, frankly, in the art field, is that you see the fruits of your labor being expressed by the quality of the productions and the art that your students produce. But I want you to know that... I've been in their chairs. I know how complicated things can be. And I know that sometimes you have to change your approach from one student to another because what might be clear as glass to you may be clear as mud to the next person. El corazón. Okay, clase. ¿Cuáles son los uh, pronombres de los objetos indirectos? The corazón, el corazón, it, it's your heart. Um, heart is everything, and that's part of the, you know, in Spanish, you have to have that heart and soul and passion, and you have to have that for teaching as well, and that, I think, is what comes through to the students. I, you know, I really love what I do, and every day that I come in, I really do try to improve every semester and find things that work. So I do feel like I have to live up to that, but I really do enjoy my job, and that makes it a lot easier because I'm already trying to improve constantly, and I think that's part of being an, a good instructor. Learning Spanish is it's hard because we're so ing ingrained with our English language, which is so different from any other language. Her not being a native Spanish speaker first, I mean, she knew English first, so it was it's helpful that she went through the same process we did in learning Spanish. Congratulations to all of the PSE teachers who were recognized. That wraps it up for this edition of Pensacola State Today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Drexel Gilbert. We'll see you next time.